So before we get started with some more specific slash actual content on this page for my project, I kind of wanted to talk about the why behind minimalism, at least for me, the things that I found helpful and why I choose to pursue minimalism because I don't think that you should do anything in your life without a reason behind it, specifically a godly eternal reason because if you're not doing it for eternity or to glorify and honor the Lord, then why are you really doing it? Because it's just going to be worthless in the end. So hopefully this is helpful for you because when I first started minimalism, I did not think about having a specific reason behind it. I just kind of started it and realized afterwards. So my sister has kind of been in my ear about it for years, specifically when it comes to your wardrobe because she did a capsule wardrobe uh, probably three years ago now is when she first kind of started getting into minimalism and she was blogging then and she was just encouraging me to try all this kind of stuff and I was like, ah, I don't know if I can do that. I was not convinced and she gave me lots of great reasons but I was like, I, I just don't think I can do that. So I didn't and probably about a year ago now, Ishley, I was just like, oh my gosh, I have so much stuff in my closet, like I really need to pare down some of my clothes. But in my head, I was like, well, I'm going to be moving to college soon, so I'm just going to wait because I feel like I'll be more ready to get rid of stuff and be able to get rid of more if I wait until I'm moving to college. Um, so I put it off for a really long time, and looking back now, I can, like, I get my reasoning a little bit, but also that wasn't really a good reason, so I'm glad I ended up going ahead and just getting rid of all that stuff. And the thing that finally got me on board was this Reels series that I saw from Impact for Good, which is an account on Instagram that shares just minimalism and sustainability content, and she made a real series on how to clean out your closet, and I was like, I feel like I can do this now. So I did, and I got rid of at least two-thirds of my closet, probably more, and it was literally hundreds of items. And so I was like, all right, like, I'm going to do minimalism now. And my sister started having a lot more conversations with me and sharing things with me, and I started learning more about minimalism, like, beyond the closet, in your, like, kind of whole life. I watched the documentary Minimalism by The Minimalists. Um, and so that also just helped me like get some perspective like, oh hey, this is like a thing that actual real people do and they seem to really be enjoying it and getting a lot of value from it. Like maybe they've got something, like there's something to this. Maybe I should try it. So I did. Um, and I really haven't looked back. It's been great. But maybe a a couple weeks to a month in, I started realizing like, oh hey Lindsay, you're just kind of doing this because you think it's cool or just whatever, but you don't you don't really have a good reason for why you're doing this right now. So I started to kind of pray through that and I could see ways that minimalism was beneficial to me or even helping me in my walk with the Lord. Um, and so I just kind of prayed that the Lord would help me to only continue minimalism if it was truly helpful um, because I don't want to pursue something for the sake of pursuing something, especially if it's not um, like a spiritual goal. Um, and I also don't want to justify my pursuit of something with godly reasons if they're really not. I feel like minimalism is a helpful tool for the Christian. I don't feel like all Christians have to be minimalists. Um, I've just found it really helpful in my life and would love to share that with other people if they would also find value from practicing minimalism. So here are three reasons why I decided to continue pursuing minimalism. Number one is better mindfulness. And this was the very first thing that I noticed when I started practicing minimalism is that when I had less things to think about and less decisions to make, um, like when I'm getting dressed in the morning, for example, um, I just had, my, my brain had so much more space to think about much more important things, like how I'm carrying myself through the day to day, if I'm worshiping the Lord, if I'm honoring Him in my decisions, um, things like that. And I've also just found that when my space is cluttered, like, 
I feel cluttered and it just makes for just more difficulty in walking with the Lord throughout my day. Number two is less things to take care of, which translates into better stewardship of the things that you do have. So when you have generally less things, um, number one, it's easier to keep thing cl things clean, like I was talking about in the last point, because everything has a home and it's not like you have you don't have to be hyper organized to keep everything clean because that used to be me I used to just crazy organize all the way too much stuff that I had and so I thought that I was pretty good at keeping control of my stuff when in reality I was just really good at organizing um, so there's a real difference there and having a true home that's not overflowing or has to have the most specific organization system ever to get everything to fit is just really frees you up. It's much easier to be clean and um, the thing about cleanliness is it it makes order into chaos because we know that everything in the universe tends towards chaos and that God created order and so when we keep things clean and orderly it reflects a God who puts order into chaos and so that's a really cool thing that we get to do as Christians. Um, and then you're also just going to take much better care of the items that you do have because you're using them all the time and you only have one of them and things like that. Number three is you're going to spend way less money. And this is a wonderful thing because a lot of the things that we choose to spend our money on are just plain stupid and I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> so. Once you kind of pare down your things to the things that you use on a regular basis, you're going to be much more intentional with the things that you bring into your life. You're going to think about them a lot more. Specifically in your closet too because when you have less things that you're wearing and you're just like on this heavy rotation, you are going to know exactly what's in your closet. So when you see that cute striped shirt at Goodwill and you're like, oh my gosh, I should buy this. But then you're like, ah, I already own two striped shirts, so I don't need another one. Um, it just helps avoid unnecessary purchases or unintentional purposes in a lot of ways. However, if you do decide to pursue minimalism, I just have a couple warnings. Number one would be don't make minimalism a selfish pursuit. And I've kind of already talked about that, but I really caution you to if or when you listen to minimalists or minimalism sources, really take that with a huge grain of salt because the minimalists, like those guys, like they they think that they found a life of meaning because they found minimalism and a life of meaning is only found in Christ so don't don't cover up any problems don't think you're gonna cover up any problems with minimalism like the answer is always Christ it always has been it always will be so don't think this is gonna solve your problems and don't don't practice minimalism as something that's gonna bring you joy only Christ can bring you joy. Your things or your lack of things is never ever going to bring you joy or fulfill fulfillment. That's only found in Christ. So be careful with that because most people on the secular minimalism side are going to tell you things that can, can go wrongly for the Christian. That can go towards selfishness and just sinfulness. So just be really careful with that. Um, the second caution I would have is that don't think that because you are minimalist then you are more godly than your non-minimalist counterparts. My mentor um, told me, and I just found a lot of wisdom in it, that um, more, like a lot of things and a few things, neither one of them is necessarily more godly. The Lord looks at the heart and they're like people who have a lot of things, they can be stewarding those things well and be honoring the Lord in having a lot of things. And you can have less things and be honoring the Lord and stewarding those things well and having less things and you're both, um, you both have the right heart 
and are pleasing to the Lord. Um, so don't think that just because you're a minimalist means that you're more godly and never look down on other people because they um, choose to live their Christian life as long as they're not in sin differently than you in the mechanism that they employ. And then lastly, be careful with Christian minimalist theology because I have ran into some wishy, sketchy, I, yeah, some interesting stuff by way of Christian minimalism. So just be really careful and make sure you're super biblical in the way that you think about minimalism and if people are using verses to justify a minimalist lifestyle just just go read the verse for yourself read it in context study the actual words the greek and hebrew and stuff like that just make sure you are very careful with anything you hear whether on the secular or christian side of minimalism and you know hopefully this channel for however long it goes on can be a source of really biblical thinking when it comes to minimalism and some rich theology so you can be praying for me that I would be able to provide that um, with the Lord's strength and blessing and yeah that's about it I really encourage minimalism it's been super helpful to me so I say get a shot and yeah let me know if you have any questions or any specific minimalism content you would like to see in the future. But I pray that you would live a life that worships.